Hello, everyone. Uh, after my trip and um, the, uh, what do we call those, souvenirs that I got myself, I have to really work on the 100 Things Challenge. Now, if you guys don't know about the 100 Things Challenge, which I'm sure most of you do, um, Dances with Pitbulls, and I cannot remember her first name, but she does this pretty much every year. And the idea is that you need to make a hundred things before you uh, buy anything else. And you need to make those hundred things with the things that are in your stash that you should have been using all along. Well, uh, I have plenty of things in my stash and I, I have been trying to get rid of some of those things out of my stash because you know but I want to use them I don't want to just get rid of them and one of the things I like a lot is to have 100% cotton um, dish rags I really like these dish rags uh, they scrub real good they work real well um, I wash them in very hot water <laughs> so they, they don't look real pretty after a week or two of well you know I use them for a day um, here in Florida, uh, I pretty much change my dish rag every single morning because otherwise they tend to sour with the humidity we have. Even with the air conditioner running, we have a lot of humidity. So, um, they, they get washed with bleach and so they don't look real pretty, but that's okay. They function and that's what makes me happy. Now, I used to collect this yarn at all sorts of garage sales. I, I just put this out because I wanted you to see. This is a really old uh, sticker, I think, because I have no idea how much they cost. Um, but I've, I've collected them at garage sales because I wanted to make these things. And this actually was purchased for, it's another cotton yarn. It was purchased for another project but I'm going to work to use up this cotton yarn in the same manner. I did here recently grab this from Dollar Tree and I'm sorry I did. Um, I won't use it for this. I have another project I'll use this for. Uh, this is not 100% cotton. It's only 85% cotton and it's 15% polyester. So needless to say, I wouldn't purchase my cotton yarn from Dollar Tree. Um, but then if it doesn't matter to you, if it's hundred percent cotton, then I don't know if this is a good buy or not, because I haven't bought this kind of yarn in a very, very long time. Um, you can get it most everywhere. Uh, this one I know comes from Hobby Lobby, but okay. So let me get on with what I was going to tell you and going to do is after I decided I needed to do the 100 things challenge, I started work. And I actually have nine finished uh, dish rags. You could also use these for washcloths. They're really nice to scrub your face with because they're soft, but they are they have a bump. Um, I like them to be pretty good sized. I don't like little tiny ones. Excuse me one second. Hey! Oh, I'm so sorry. Um... Returning to Florida also means we return to all of the lovely ragweed that's out right now. Um, but this, this is the size I like to make. And this is the pattern I use. It's kind of mindless. And I thought I would kind of give you just a little tiny tutorial. It is not really a tutorial because, frankly, uh, I'm not the greatest knitter in the whole world. Let's move these out of the way. Needless to say, these I will have completed 10 of these when I finish this one. I'm going to start and show you. Um, I happen to have these little short knitting needles. I like these. These are size... Are these sixes? Yes, they're size sixes. I, I happen to like this pair because they're short and they're easy to work with when I'm sitting in a chair. Um, 
this is an easy pattern and it is not my pattern i'm sure i got it from someone else somewhere along the line um if you have problems finding a pattern just run to ravelry and um if you're not familiar with ravelry they have all kinds of patterns knitting crocheting they have patterns that you have to pay for they have patterns that are free <clears throat> and I don't change the pattern I don't change what pattern I'm doing because this one's easy it's it's kind of mindless I can do it sitting somewhere where I don't have to pay attention um, and like I said I do this kind of my way I make a little slip knot let me put this in here uh, this is called a cast on and if you're not familiar with a cast on stitch then just please look up knitters <laughs> and cast on stitch on YouTube please don't do what necessarily what I do I am NOT a knitter I would follow but I put four stitches on my needle like so Another thing about this is that the pattern is the same over and over and over again. Now I do leave myself a nice long tail. I like to weave these tails in so that I don't that they don't come unraveled. Make sure you don't grab the silly tail when you go to start. And frankly, doing this on top of the table. Let me bring you in a little bit. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Okay. I just... This first row, I just knit. Sometimes it's a little hard. This is called a garter stitch if you look it up online. Let's move this over here. Get that out of the way where you guys can see. Oops, sorry. Okay. The second row is where we start our pattern. Oh, I can't see it, can't see without it. Okay. The pattern is that you knit two stitches. And you do what's called a yarn over, which means I take this one and I wrap it around and then I just knit the next stitch. This is what's going to increase it. The, let me get one. The pattern in this thing starts in one corner and grows, but it grows only on one side. But when you turn it over, it's growing on the other side. And so you knit until you get to the corners here, and then you um, decrease it. So just turn it over. So I do my two stitches and then I wrap it around and then I just keep knitting. So what happens is the row grows by one stitch each and every time you knit across it. Oops, slipped. Like I said, um, if you looked up dish rag patterns, I'm sure that this is out there somewhere. And there's probably a knitter that uh, shows it way better than I do and probably does it correctly. I will not promise you that I do this correctly. But this is what I'm doing to do use up some of this yarn. Now I have a few other projects with this yarn because you always end up with partial balls. And I happen to like my, um, because, because they get, really abused in the wash. I like my um, wash dish rags 
to be made strictly with one chain of yarn. I don't like to use the scraps for this particular project. I like them to always be made with the same single yarn. And what's going to happen is I'm just going to continue doing this and that's why this is kind of it's something I can do when I'm not having to pay, when I'm not paying attention to something. You can actually do this um, if you watch TV. Um, I sometimes do this when I'm watching live streams. I have to have a pattern that does not uh, make me have to think because I am not really a knitter. I just knit a little bit. So what's going to happen is I'm just going to keep up with the same exact thing. I'm going to knit two stitches, do a yarn over, and finish out the row. And I'm going to continue to do that over and over again. You can see sort of the pattern is developing. My little holes are developing in the edge of the pattern. Um, what we're going to do, and I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole thing because this takes a while. Um, this is not something that I can do in five minutes, and that is why I counted each of my dish rags that I finished, and I will count this one. I'll have done 10 dish rags when I finish this one, so I'll have done 10 of my 100 things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue that pattern and then until I have 50 stitches across here. And you just count each loop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10. So I have to do 40 more rows. So when I get to where I have 50 stitches across here, I'll uh, be back to show you how I finish the rest of the um, dish rack. All right. So we have now done the increased rows from the corner where I started with four until I now have 50 stitches across my knitting needle. Uh, this is one of those things if you want a smaller dishcloth or for some unknown reason want a smaller square just don't knit as many rows and to make it the same all the time you just make it till you have the number of stitches across here I happen to like 50 um, it, it gives me a nice good sized dishcloth so then the next step is to start doing our decreasing rows and that's where we're at right now and so what happens is we increase and then we decrease and it creates the square so the decrease rows are just a little bit different than the increase rows let me bring you in as close as I can get it to this and still try to do it and see all right now again remember I am NOT a great knitter so um, this is how I do it I knit the first stitch just like normal then the next stitch I knit two together so I just slide into two loops and do my knit stitch now to create the hole because we have these lovely little holes all the way up we want the same holes to go on the downside so now I'm going to do a yarn over and then I'm going to knit two more together okay now that seems kind of counterintuitive to me because uh, you're increasing on a decreasing row the thing is is you're decreasing one stitch so this decrease is to make up for your yarn over which creates the hole this decrease makes up for that yarn over so this is where I decrease for the length of the row and this is where I decrease 
because of the yarn over. Now I'm going to knit across this row and I'll show you that again. And of course it's going to take a little while so I'll try to speed it up. Okay, as you saw, I just continued to just straighten it all the way across to finishing the row. Now I'm going to do that decreasing beginning one more time. And it's not easy to knit flat on the table. I'm sorry if, if it looks uh, cumbersome. Uh, I usually knit in my lap. But the first stitch is just a plain knit stitch. Then you knit two stitches together so you just slide in to two loops and knit you do a yarn over and you knit two together and then you just continue to knit across the row until you finish the row Okay, and I'm not going to make you sit and watch me knit another whole row. But what you do is you just continue this pattern with the decreases until you get down to having four stitches on your knitting needle. When you have four stitches left on your needle, I'll be back to show you how to finish this off. Okay, guys, be back in a little bit. Okay, so I have knit and done my decreases until I have four stitches left on my needle. Now at this stage of the game there's a, a, a yarn over right here and because that one it's not going to cast off properly I go ahead and knit one row just plain knit of these four stitches. Okay, and then I, I um, cast it off, and I, I have no idea what this is called. This was just, it's just one way to do these things. There are lots of ways to cast on and cast off. My way is not necessarily the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way I do it. Please, please look up other options if you want to do something different. But once I've knit that last row, I knit two stitches like this. And then I take this needle and I take hold of the first stitch I knit. Okay, I'm trying to show you and at the same time do it. So it's a little hard. But I bring it over the top of the other stitch. Let me do the next one. I knit this stitch. And now you see I have two stitches on this needle. What I do is I take the first one and I put it over the other one. And I just do that across the four stitches until I only have one stitch left now. Okay? And once I have just one stitch left, I just pull it up. And I have a loose um, space right there. And 
I pass my yarn through that loop and I pull it down. Now it, it looks a little funky right now, but you know, this is a dish rag and we're going to wash it. So not a big deal. So now I like to have, oh, a good 10, 12 inches to, to, um, weave back in. And so I'm just going to show you how I do that. And there again, I am sure there are special ways to do this. I just do it my way. I guess you could just tie a knot and be done with it. But at the same time, these are going to take some abuse in the laundry. So I like to have, um, I'll put this more in the middle. Sorry. Um, I like to have them uh, woven in where they're not going to uh, come out. And I just go up this outside row for a little ways and I just kind of weave in and out of it. I'm trying to pick a path that uh, holds on to the thread. And then once I get up here where I've got sort of a row that is, you know, enough, a couple of inches of this, I go across into here. And then I just sort of start following the thread path that the previous stitches made. So I'm going to go down and I don't pull it tight, tight, but I do, pull, I pull it snug, but not tight, tight. Basically, I'm following the path of the other thread. When I get to a spot where I can't put it through anymore with the front of the needle, I'll take the back of the needle and this is, you know, it's very loose weave. It's not like you're trying to sew it. And then this piece can it'd help if I had better scissors. Okay, so then we just turn it around and we do the same exact thing on the other end. Now, sometimes when you knit something, you do something called blocking it, which means that you make it, you make it lay in a special shape. These are dishcloths, so I have no intention of doing that. I will fold it up, put it in the drawer, and use it it's going to get washed in very hot water tea gets on them because you know i'm always spilling tea and they get nasty because they have tea stains so they're going to get washed in hot water and probably some bleach didn't make that particular string long enough, did I? If that's the case and I feel like it hasn't been pushed through there enough, I will spend a little extra time making it worked through with the um, back side of the needle. It, it takes a little more work, but Well, 
great thing to do on camera is to try to thread a needle because you can be guaranteed if somebody's watching you cannot thread a needle no matter how big the eye is there we go okay so that whoops let's back up a little bit That finishes a dish rag made out of some cotton yarn that I already had, which um, I wanted to use, wanted to make something out of, and it is one of my 100 things project challenge to do 100 things. Um, I... I know this is not related to paper and junk journaling and art mediums, but it's also one of those things that I do and I wanted to show you. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Have fun. Maybe make one. Let me know in the comments if you if you make these. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to read you a quote from my 1001 Ways to Creativity. Imagination grows by exercise. Oh, I like that. And contrary to common belief, it is more powerful in the mature than in the young. W. Somerset Monaghan. Hmm. I agree that imagination grows by exercise. The more you use it, the more you have. But, um, interesting. Okay, guys, go have fun. Make some art. Bye-bye.